What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to another episode of the eFootball Universe podcast. And we are ready to go. We've got Spoonie in the building. Well, virtually in the building, I should say. Spoonie, <laughs> what is the crack, man? I'm doing very good, mate. I'm very, very good. Uh, obviously, with the, the release of 2.3, um, I've obviously played only one game so far on Legend Difficulty against the AI. And uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And uh, how's Yeah, yourself? but you're going to be throwing yourself in at the deep end tonight, man. At oh, time yeah. Of recording now, you're going to be throwing yourself into a live stream. I've already. I've already dipped my toe in those waters, and yeah, it wasn't. It was. It was a tough one. It was a tough session. Yeah, but, I, uh, I saw, saw some of your feedback. So yeah, I got right. Yeah, <laughs> it was rough, man. It was rough. But we'll we'll get into that. Obviously, we recorded a podcast for a few people. Were asking me where was the the Spoonie episode of the podcast because we did one with Wes. Um, we did actually record one Spoonie, but you know, I had a few technical issues here. I hope that they're sorted now with the audio and stuff. Um, yeah. So that was my bad, but. Yeah, we are gonna we are just gonna have a discussion about V two point three. Um maybe have a quick bit on the World Cup towards the end as well, but mostly just about V two point three and about the I suppose the lack of the communication that we've got from May. A lot of people obviously surprisingly were were kind of expecting big changes yesterday to V with V two point three, including modes and they were expecting some people were expecting edit mode. And that all came from, you know, Konami themselves when they had officially said it back in May, which is a long time ago now, obviously. Um, you know, they had said that they would be getting we would be getting stuff in winter twenty two and you know that time period is nearly over now, so it's obviously gonna roll into twenty twenty three. Um but yeah, that's kind of what the main topic is here because it is easy to blame people for thinking edit mode would come when there was no promotion about it, they hadn't talked about it, but they hadn't actually come out and said you know, they hadn't really updated that information since May, had they? No, no, that's right. They, uh, in, in fact, I think they should should have been yeah. more transparent and brought out a new roadmap and said, "Look, this, you know, we've we've fell behind, we've fallen behind. This is the uh, this is a new roadmap that we're sort of working towards. Maybe they just don't want to set themselves up to fail. Who knows? Like, obviously, if you mm. bring out another roadmap and you, they don't hit those targets, they're setting themselves up to fail. But they've they've already did that in the first place so <laughs> yeah. everyone's got that roadmap on, in their heads and stuck on their walls and they're looking at it and like oh you know if uh if it doesn't if the edit mode's in on december just you wait i've got my tweets lined up <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know but it it is a thing as well man that like i think when you when you look at it logically with what the stuff that they've been focusing on to announce for the last couple of months it has all been geared towards stuff that's already been out such as cards for dream team you know, that esports stuff, obviously, that they were being talking about. You know, you can see where the focus is now at the moment. And I think in the long term, they probably just overshot their prediction of having edit mode and stuff out by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. Because back in May, like May is a long time ago. And people might say six months isn't a long time. But in, in games development, like a lot can change in six months, like a lot can change. So um, I think that's what kind of happened. But mm. Yeah, I mean, a simple tweet could have went out maybe in June or July, just as a follow up and say, look, you know, it's looking like we're going to have to push what we announced here in this thread and maybe quote tweet it and, you know, have a proper roadmap and say, look, this is when we're looking at getting edit mode in where you'll be able to edit, you know, this, that and the other starting from March 2023 or June 2023 or, you know, something like that. But yeah. I do think that that's probably where a lot of the confusion and a lot of the anger came from with people that you know, they never put up any updated information on it. But even though I think they are a little bit behind with other modes, um, such as the focus at the moment. But then Dream Team, you know, there's a brand new, I, I, I said this in one of my videos, there is a brand new fan base there for Dream Team. And I'm sure you're seeing that as well, Spoonie, with the guys and the people that are interacting with your videos yeah. now. A lot of the fan base has gone from... When when I entered the fan, when I entered the community, a lot of the fan base has changed from Master League and you know who's the best default player to level up in Master League and edit mode and kits and you know getting better kit quality to now you know which version of Neymar out of the seven versions of him <laughs> is the best? How do you train him up? Yeah, and some of these guys, man, genuinely that interact with me on YouTube, and it's not I'm a bigger fan than them or they're you know they're beneath me in their opinions or of anything because i played pez four five and six or whatever 
Yeah. But they, they literally have never heard of edit modes. And that's that's probably absurd to somebody like me or you because yeah. you know, we know what the mods are. But that's that's kind of a large portion of the fan base now because the game's gone free to play. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's going to introduce a whole new whole new audience. And uh, touching on your point about you know the edit mode and everything falling behind. Um, you know, obviously edit mode was planned for December. Yeah, it's 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 not looking not looking great in terms of uh, from a PR perspective, marketing perspective from Konami. A lot of people mm. are frustrated with that. Um, but yeah, and and like you said, with the with the with the new audience, I mean that's scary that you know you're getting people who don't know what edit mode is. I've I've not come across that yet, but <laughs> yeah, well, I have. Trust me, I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I've got quite an older older audience. Maybe I've got, and uh, they they used to the edit modes and playing PES five, PES six. But yeah, it's it's a strange one. Like, but I, th- I just think the whole the whole everything is just being pushed back. Um, and we can't exclude COVID. I mean, I don't want to make excuses for Konami, but that that's obviously clearly had an impact on every business in the world. Um, yeah, definitely. Some, they definitely some weren't ready. Like, they weren't set for that at all. No, no. But, you know, change an engine, change, like everything was changing, and it was the worst possible time. And yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, yeah. In terms of the in terms of the edit mode, I think probably what we're looking at January, February, or hazard a guess <laughs> i yeah. always i always said like i don't know when i can't remember when people was like oh when's massively coming out and this was way back i think you know version one maybe and i was like predicting april 23 and i'm like now i'm thinking mm-hmm. oh maybe it's like june july <laughs> it's, yeah. i always like to try and make these predictions and people like oh when's it coming out I was like well i don't know i don't have an yeah. insider inside knowledge i can just guess and speculate like everyone else can but you know that's uh, that's what I tend yeah. to do when people it's, ask. It's it's tough though, man, because the new like there is a new there is a new fan base there that that's coming over from the mobile. I think I think the reason why we're probably seeing it more than ever now is because before the assets kind of weren't shared. So you might have in Pez Mobile, you might have one agent or one login bonus that would be specific, you know, specific or unique to the, the mobile version of the game compared to the console. So we might turn on the console and play on our PS4s with Pez, and it would be, yeah, you know, sign in and get a legend this week. Whereas, like, mobile might sign in and get an iconic moment player or something like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas now everything is shared. Yeah, so yeah. the information is shared that if I'm doing a player review on, you know, console on my PS5 of Beckenbauer, the information is relevant to mobile players because it's releasing across all devices at the same time. Yes. So... You know, mobile players have never, you know, might never have played a game before Pez Mobile. So, like, you're talking about them, have they have a two-year history with Konami as a sports developer compared to our 20-plus year history with it. Yeah. So, yeah. They, they, they don't know, you know, and that's not a bad thing. It's just, like, that's they don't know what Master League is. They don't know, they don't have that same kind of, like appreciation for an offline mode where you build a squad up they don't have any nostalgia tied to pez they're no. just happy to to play e-football and hence that's where the success the success is coming from because if you were to judge if you were to judge e-football and like think about e-football compared to what you see on twitter like the, the game would have lasted a month and then it would have just been gone bankrupt because nobody yeah. would have been nobody was playing it nobody was spending coins yes that- you know that's not that's not the case like the game is 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 going from strength to strength in terms of you know cards like how many packs have they released since the game launched like yeah. a lot Heaps. You know? Heaps. So, who's <laughs> buying them you know they're not releasing them just 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 to decorate the game like yeah yeah I mean, when i when i play the game i you know i use the road to glory squad, squad which basically you know d- means i don't invest in coins i just you know take the free coins that are on offer mm. um via the match pass whatever but yeah, you, I come up against a lot of God squads. I'm like, literally, how <laughs> you know some of these players? Yeah. They got in their squads. I'm just like, wow, how much money have you guys spent on these? You know, trying to attain all these players. Um, you think it's like what eighty quid if you wanted to pre? I I generally find like eighty quid to acquire all all three legends. Generally, mm. if you want in like in those in those packs where there's like 150 p- 
Yeah, to clear it. 150 players. Yeah, if you want the three, it's usually around 80 quid. You're looking around 80 quid unless you're really lucky. Mm. Um, you know, you, and you desperately want all three, but you know that. And then you think about how many, like you say, how many packs have been released since then. That's uh, that's a lot of dosh. And you think, you know, when they release standard Pez 21, it's, what 30 quid? <laughs> mm. After a while, it's been down to like 15, 20 quid. Um, yeah. Not anymore. It's about Andrew could on eBay now. Pez twenty one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so obviously no, they're not being sold anymore. But um, yeah, for for e football, you think of just how much money they're raking in just through the packs and everything. They just they must be just lapping it up. So yeah, from a mm. business point of view, it's it's better for them. Um, but yeah, people people will pay the money to try and have get the best players, and I. For me, I do like that about you. I love the way Dream Team set out. I love the way you can buy players. I love the way the packs are done. I think it's all really good. Um, yeah. Just my issue with it is sort of around the actual... When you get that player on the pitch, very few feel... You know, only a handful of players, probably, I don't know, 10, unique. 20 players feel actually unique. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I got this player now. This is going to be great. Yeah. And then he kicks the ball passes the ball moves you know runs the yeah. same everyone runs the same way or more or less um there's no real difference into the way they strike the ball so they end up feeling a lot like everyone else i'm like mm. bloody hell what's the difference between sterling and sancho or you know some players feel slightly better like Grealish feels really good to me and you'll you'll get you'll get that you'll find some players just feel nicer for but yeah. you can't really put your finger on it. Like the stats are very similar, and you just like why does why does Grealish and Riyad Mahrez on my wings feel better than Sancho and Sterling? They're, they're yeah. very similar stats wise. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is. It, no, I, like I definitely think when you when you strip it back, I do think that Dream Team, for me personally, anyway. Like I I in, I in, I actually enjoy Dream Team as it's set up exactly as you said there. Like. Yeah, I do have a lot of issues with it. Most of them, 95% of the issues I have are either connection-based or, like, you know, gameplay-specific stuff that have, you know, either been, you know, patched a little bit now since launch, like, with 1.0, or they still are an issue, such as, like, the refs or the collision systems, mm -hmm. even though they've improved a little. But 95% of my issues are not got to do with the actual move to the model, like the free-to-play mm -hmm. Dream Team model. Yep. Um... Like, I'm okay with that. Obviously, like, Master League, edit modes, like, that's that, that's just a whole different podcast because, you know, that's that's my whole identity with Pez, like, the Pez series, like, was... I never... I didn't start in this community as a YouTuber or a content creator. It was more as an editor in the background until, you know, we started Pez Uni and then go that route ourselves, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Um, whereas, like, now because that option isn't there. But I, I don't blame Dream Team for that. Like, I enjoy, you know, going on to play Dream Team when I get the few hours to play it, and I enjoy doing my videos, and I enjoy, you know, playing my brand of football if I'm able to. I like being able to control games and get yeah. a good win. Um, and I like the model. Like, I, I like training up players. Like, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of really cool concepts there that just need to be fleshed out a little bit more, but there is a lot of cool concepts there compared to if you think of Pez 21, man, like, you couldn't even go in and buy a player on the market. Like, you literally, you know, it was everything was random. It was like... Yes, that's right. You know, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, it was kind of cute in a way, but, like, would I trade back Pez 2021 setup with with, with uh, my club? Like, no I way. wouldn't. No you know, because it's Same. miles ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, that, I, I absolutely love the Dream Team aspect. Like, I've had so much fun recently, especially now I put up loads of coins and, and GP... And the fact I'm, like, creating different squads, you know, because obviously I had the World Cup. We've got the World Cup events being on recently, you know, creating, um, you know, the the sort of Argentina squad, Netherlands squad or Morocco squad. You know, you can, you can create it how you want, you know, and then you come up against loads of different teams with different styles mm. and everything. You come up against Senegal. You know, you, you play FIFA and you'll just come up against France all the time. I mean, there was a lot yeah. of France, France players playing against <laughs> yeah. France, and that's obvious. You know, they got, like, some Mbappe, Griezmann, and they got one of the strongest squads and that's okay but to be honest i had like a loads of variety in the games i was playing i thought that's really good and then i was just like messing around with it even more i was like then creating um you know i used your database to 
find really tall players and then started mm. just long balling up to see it's just to see if it could work online offline it, offline it worked quite well but online <laughs> i wouldn't recommend it it's like launching into yang collar and uh oh v- yeah yang collar is the man boy yeah but yeah yeah so yeah. i saw you review on him so i was like oh, yeah you know what i'm gonna give him a shot and then that's that's yang where is unaffected by lag or bad connection he just, <laughs> he just fucking does what he wants I know, he I doesn't know. care what the connection is i know he could I know. be playing on wi-fi and it doesn't matter he's still banging goals <laughs> in like yeah that, that's he's quality. an animal yeah so yeah just 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 things like let's you get creative with your squads and let's you just try out new players but like i say just it just needs if they could build in the player id really you know sooner rather than later i know obviously we had kamara in an interview back last year probably or you know maybe this yeah, year like, was, i yeah. lost track you know um and he, he sort of came out and said there's player ids being scrapped basically I was like, "Why?" Mm-hmm. But well, that's it's, because it's... they want all the players to be, the, you know, to, like when you're playing esports, it's it's kind of the same in FIFA. They want they, they want the, the playing like level playing field that all yeah. players feel the same. So when you're pressing the same buttons, it doesn't matter if you're playing as France, Germany, and you know the difference comes between the stats then that it's very stats driven. Yes. Um, yeah. You know that's that's kind of been a thing when you do go free to play. That's the way they probably do need to make it because. Like, look, I still think Neymar, I can do things with Neymar and Messi with shooting. Like, I've scored dozens of fucking bangers, like curl shots from out the pitch. Yeah. I just wouldn't be able to hit him. I wouldn't have the confidence to hit him with players that have better stats or equal stats. As you said at the start, it was a great point. You know, that you could have a, a left winger that has got 92 curl shot, but Neymar's got 87 curl shot. But mm-hmm. you're hitting it with Neymar every time because you know you can bang him in. Yeah. So... It's just that kind of placebo thing, isn't it? That placebo effect that it's Neymar and he's a, you know, he's Neymar. Um, but that's the way that's the way they have gone. It's like in fighting games, man. There's all they're always balanced, and then it's more about like the combos and stuff. Yeah, I think that's the way football has gone. Because some people love that. You yeah. Know? Whereas me and you thinking about that in in mastery, it's like well, why why do I need to go off and like blow 150 million buying a centre midfielder? When like when he'll feel the exact same as this guy, I can get for ten million. Do you know? Yeah. Like, there has to be a di- a difference between the players and old Pez games like Zidane and Iniesta. Like they had that. You could literally, you know, it was like it just smacked you in the face. Even if you didn't want to see it, you'd see the touches from Zidane and stuff back in Pez four. You'd see the the run forwards from Henri. Do you know? So mm-hmm. that yeah. is kind of lost a little bit now. I definitely agree with you. Yeah, I just wonder, like, with the player ID, why why have they scrapped it? Is it because it's a lag issue? Is it like the extra animation is going to cause, you know, can the the mobile, you know, eventually once we're, you know, fully um, cross play, is that going to be an issue for the mobile devices to ha- take those additional animations? Going to put too much. You yeah. know, I don't know, man. I'd say I'd say that it's probably more simplified than that. If you were just trying to have a level playing field as a kind of esports ready, free to play game. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like in Fortnite or whatever, like whatever gun you pick up, like they all kind of handle the same. You know, yeah. obviously, if you play Warzone or you play a game like that, you're just going to be a difference between shooting a sniper and a shotgun. But there isn't going to be a massive learning curve between using five different types of snipers. You know, they're all going to handle kind of the same. They mm-hmm. might be slightly different, but you know, you'll just pick the one that you choose. I think that's the same with eFootball at the moment, that it's like... Like, NBA do a really good job of that because with NBA 2K, they do a really... Like, the AI in that or the player ID in that is phenomenal. But that's that's animation-driven. So, like, certain players will have... You know, LeBron will have LeBron's jump shot that nobody else will have. It'll just be unique to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the mechanics of the gameplay will be the exact same for every player. And it's just handled by stats. So a fast player will really stand out. And then you'll have, you know, maybe five or six animations that is like Michael Jordan will have his dunk if you're playing with Jordan or yeah. LeBron will have his jumper. So I think in, I think in, we do have that in eFootball a bit when you see Messi strike the ball and stuff. But yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's very, you know, it's very unique to certain players. Like yeah. I wouldn't yeah. say that it's nowhere near where it was with the old Pez games. Like. Yeah. It's just a handful of players like Neuer comes off his line, things like little things like that that you sort of notice. Guti, the way he passes the ball sometimes is uh, yeah. a little bit nice. Beckham, and, obviously, with his stance and Ronaldo Carlos with his free kicks. Yeah. Ronaldo's little shimmy that he did against yeah. Chelsea. And like, there are like some that. there. It's just, yeah. it's not, I, I know what you're saying. It's not as, 
prominent like more most more often than not now like if i find a hidden gem it's the reason why he's a hidden gem is because he's cheap he can play various different positions he might have unwavering form he'll have really good player skills and stats that boost up it's not because he has this unique running style or this unique animation that mm. lets him do oh, a yeah. specific skill move or something like that you know like neymar's double touch that kind yeah. of animated one yes um so that's kind of i think that's where they've changed it. it is very stats driven and i do think that that's yeah it might have something to do with mobile man i mean obviously mobile is is definitely a big part of it because you just have to look at the graphics like of the game at the moment like when you see when you see some of the games that are out on ps5 at the moment and they're just phenomenal like and then you look at you look at eFootball like it's nowhere near where it needs to be as a next gen football game graphically no, no it's horrible majority of games are played at the bloody Konami Stadium because everyone else chooses a team that's not Arsenal or United or you know, <laughs> has, has a ground that's, that's linked to the club so you know if they just fix the that that stadium for me personally I'm, it's just such an eyesore I literally have to put some background graphics on through OBS just to make it look nice for, for the viewers <laughs> you know um, and, and obviously from an animation point of view I just said like more player ID just give us more player ID like make make the arms and legs move a little bit different the way they kick the yeah. ball and stuff so yeah um so that that was my sort of feedback from that but you touched on esports and i find this like i don't know for me like if that's their focus i don't know about you but i get the feeling like surely surely we need some dedicated service for starters yeah i think so man <laughs> I, like, it, I think that's what their focus is at the moment and the only reason i'm saying that is oh, i'm using i'm trying to use a bit of logic like, <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's what they've been talking about i mean they did i watched that space that uh they did where they were talking about the italian esports stuff. oh yes yeah i miss that um, that's what that's what the topic was about yeah. and you also look at the bruno cup you look at the international cup event they did you look yes. at the creator cups um i presume they'll have another couple of those planned in the new year like i do think that they are trying to go that route because you know that's what's playable at the moment you know they're not going to talk about do a, a twitter space on edit mode because it'll be like you know every question they'll have will be like yeah more details soon more details soon more details soon you know so not mm. will get answered but yeah. like that that to me i think is a very that's a very complicated like it's a very, very, very complicated topic because I don't know enough about esports and I don't know enough about mm. the popularity of it. Mm, but like, yeah. I wouldn't, thing. I wouldn't be good enough. Like my play, my play level would never be good enough. That yeah, I might get to Division One. I've got to Division One a couple of times when I really, you know, get on my get on my uh, gym gear and sweat it out. You know, <laughs> yeah, sitting in front yeah. of the PS Five, like, like concentrating super, super hard. But like it, it's not natural for me to be a top 100 player. Like I'm just nah, not good enough. That's like, not my. That's not my aim anyway. I yeah, just play and it I don't have... play the game that way. I um, want to play. Yeah, I'm the same as you. I, I want to play to have fun and enjoy the way I'm playing. I don't want to just. You play yeah. games to have fun. <laughs> what I is know, this mate, I know, I know, I know, mate, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, like seriously though, but like the the one two spam down the middle is just it's just not for me. I mean, it, it works for the yeah, the odd the, game works. The meta, no, the meta nice players who want to just sort of. Conf like say like mention off 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 air where you sort of want to spam down the middle loads of strikers to confuse the defensive ai i mean if you want to win games like that go ahead and <laughs> you know uh, yeah. but but for me that's not that's not for me i like to play like a style and and try and use the players as they would play in real life you know that that's yeah. that's why i get in that's what i get out of the game but like going back yeah go back to esports like um obviously like you know talk about dedicated servers but having even teams that was quite good with the bruno fernandez cup i thought it was quite good to where there's only a select mm. few teams that means that everyone's got more or less a choice of the the same teams it's not like yeah you, you could it's not like someone's paid you know um all these money for these coins and they've got a better squad therefore they're gonna just cream you you know but like ha so, so having the same teams another thing they could do is like have the same form like neutral form because there's nothing worse than getting a game you see all your players like off form or even if it's like you know it sort of forces you to pick players with unwavering form and that have got you know the a grade but if you haven't got that available like i've mm. not got that on my road to glory squad i can't i can't afford to like do that i just put the players in that have got the the highest form at the time and yeah like, okay so yeah, yeah, i'm, I'm yeah. mixing matching that therefore i've not got the best squad all the time yeah but then i'm coming against players that have you know got 
I get in the game and then my players all on down arrows and it's like bloody hell, you know. Yeah, it's annoying, like, isn't four, it? Four players down arrows. I was like, how's that? How's that fair? You know, like where's where's the where's the um you know where's where's the balance? So if if they're going to be serious about esports, they just got to sort those things out. I think even teams, yeah. even form, dedicated servers. Um, otherwise, you know, you just can't can't take it seriously as an esports yeah, game. But unless unless you're going to have a lot of the a lot of the stuff offline, you know, like then that obviously cuts away all the problems. But like, yeah, it does. But it's if, a, you can't really cost. do that nowadays. Yeah, you can't really do it. And if you if you're trying to find the top one percent in the world, you know, um, who's playing this game, you have to. It has to be online. It's great. Mm. It, it's a great concept to be offline and have a playing games, but the cost have it in every country to have it in and you know to schedule it all in and i i just i just think it'd be astronomical cost wise um to do something like that so i think online is the way to go about it but you just need the the dedicated servers like i said even teams even form and then find the the top one percent if that's that's the interest but whether like like you said how how interesting is that to the actual viewers how many people are actually going to watch these that's the thing man that's the big stories? question i have as well mm. like, is like it... who's actually who's actually watching it mm. you know apart from wanting to get free coins or yeah. like stuff like that you know yeah. where there's an incentive to watch yes. it yes um yeah. like who's actually genuinely what like i would love to sit down and I used to love sitting down and watching the co-op. I watched pretty much all of the co-op ones, like from the last couple of years in Pez, mm. because I prefer, like, I actually really enjoy watching cooperative gameplay. You know, um, I, I do too. But like when yeah. I when I did it myself, I was like recording videos for my friend. Hardly anyone wants to see co-op, and I I can see it from a perspective because when I did actually watch, it, I was like, this is just this is just messy. I'm like, I don't know who which you know you can see down the bottom which players who but, <laughs> yeah. but when you're like switching between matches and you're, you're jumping between games you lose track you just like oh you, you know you don't get looking and say oh where's in dominator you don't, you know, which which curse is he oh he's a light blue mm. okay you follow him around and see what he's doing but you know like you just you just look at players and you just like you see the co-op and for me personally i think it's quite i find like the co-op numbers are much less much much yeah. less surprisingly Surprisingly, yeah. I because I, I thought that would be quite good. I think like maybe eventually if they if they can get eleven versus eleven going, yeah, that would be sick. That would be something yeah. sick. But again, whether the interest would be there is another thing, you know. But I think it's just that's the thing, man. Because a lot like a lot of people, a lot of people that play games like, and I'll probably include myself in this because I don't really like losing. Nobody likes losing online, especially if you're doing content mm-hmm. and you're getting your ass handed to you. It's very yeah. It's very hard to just sit there and lose like five six nil without complaining. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. but most people that do play online, like, want to win. So, yeah, you know that's just that's just the way it is. So, I think the problem with esports is that there's only going to be the top one percent of the player fan base actually good enough to ever compete against each other. You know, it's the same in everything. It's the same in every aspect of life. It's the same why, you know what I mean? Like. There's a lot of people that play football, but they're not as good as Messi. That yeah. doesn't mean that you don't have your Modric's and your Mbappe's and your, you know, the, the guys below him, or you don't have your 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 guys that are in League Two or League One in England or you know any league there. Like, doesn't mean that they're they should stop playing because Messi is just at a level that few get to. But I think with gaming, because there's so there's so few spots to, there to actually win something like it's very, very, very hard to sit down and take it seriously because, you know, I personally wouldn't have the time to dedicate to playing like 30 hours practice in a week. Like yeah, it just wouldn't be something that I nah. could do. Like when I was a younger man in college, maybe. But that's the thing is that like there is a, there is a gap, there is a kind of a, there is a restriction to get to getting like really hardcore into it. Whereas yeah. anyone can go on to Dream Team after work or when the kids are in bed or they get a Sunday morning, an hour to themselves, they can turn it on and they can play two or three matches and, you know, get a giant killing or, you know, beat a Division One player that's a really top rank or, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, 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 in a, it's in a vacuum. So that's where the, the thing comes of, like, that's why people like to win. Yeah. Um, so it is a difficult one, though, man. But, but it's like, there's a lot, I think there is a lot of good, right? Like, let's move on because to yes. v2.3 and cover yes. some of v2.3 because i know that's what a lot of people would be kind of listening to um and that was just kind of more of a general a general chat about the game and stuff um which i think is is very interesting as well but like for v2.3 right i know you're going to be streaming later tonight mm-hmm. i yeah. streamed 
I played three matches. I was talking to you this, talking to you before we went live. I played three matches yesterday when I woke up in the morning and I played three matches in a row and the game felt super, super good. I was like, like I was, Jesus, man, this feels so tight. Like the dribbling felt super responsive. Defending, still a bit OP. Like I still think the defending, there's like reduced the skill gap in defending. It's very easy to defend. But I thought the actual position of the defenders was reduced a fraction. Um, I'll be interested to see what you think tonight. Mm-hmm. And I played my three matches. I recorded them. I did a Dream Team Chronicles episode. And I was like, fuck, I really enjoyed it. That was fun. And then I had the bright idea of saying, right, I'm actually feeling a stream later if I get an hour to myself. And I was waiting to pick up the missus from work. I says, I'll go on and do a stream. And it was like I was playing a different game. It was like <laughs> three matches I had played that morning and recorded. And the three matches that I did live on stream were like completely different games, man. It was like as if I was playing one on a high powered PC with like fiber broadband compared to playing the other one on a PS3 with five meg Wi-Fi. That's that's the experience difference like that was there for me. Um, now, I know it's harder to play on stream and you're concentrating on the chat and you know this yourself. It is it is a difficult thing to do. But I just felt like I couldn't do anything. Like, I had no control. So I think, for me, that's where V2.3 is at at the moment, is that, like, I don't even think it's a gameplay issue because I actually quite like the gameplay and the way you're able to pass the ball around and whatever. But if the connection is bad, all bets are off. Like, that's the way I see it. And it's like anything can happen in the match then. Yeah. 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 You know? I used to got my disclaimer for later on this, uh, this evening. Yeah, you better. With you, say, you, better. With you saying uh, it's, 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 been, it's been a pretty bad experience for you, like, without, without having that control. For me personally, I like, I played one game offline against Legend AI or CPU. And. Oh, offline's fun, though, man. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted, to, like, I think, like, you can play online, but you can't really get a feel for it because it could be lag. You know, you, you can't get yeah. that true feel. And I played loads of games the night before. Um, I did a stream as well last night, so uh, it gives it just helps you know pinpoint the, the the changes a little bit easier, as well as the patch notes, which really help now, which is great for transparency, so you can focus on these things. But yeah, like the dribbling, the first touch, um, the, the the sort of sharp touch, the the um, yeah, just just when you receive the balls, much better. I just found yeah. like all that's much tighter from an offensive point of view, and that yeah, that has definitely helped. Um, certainly, the first touch is probably the biggest one. Um, still, I find around the box, just outside the box, you'll probably find your player takes a heavy touch that's still in the game from the last update. Mm. That's a little bit frustrating. So, so it doesn't matter which player you had. Um, I think I had, a, I think it was Iniesta or someone just took. Take the ball, but he did that heavy touch. I was like, oh, you know, I'm sort of expecting it now. Whether you sprint or you release the sprint, it just happens every time. You're like, yeah. okay, well, well, it's not every time, but you, yeah, it yeah, happens no, I know, frequently, I know exactly frequently enough about. to like know yeah. it's been implemented recently. And they addressed that in the patch notes, you know. Wow, the, the, they definitely... actually said that in the patch notes that if what used to happen to me was if I wanted to clear the ball and you press X and then you hold just as you're pressing X. Say you're oh. running into the ball and you press X to pass it, but then you you, you move the left stick, the directional analog stick, to oh, you know yeah. go left or right. Yeah. But what was happening instead was it wasn't passing and it was dribbling the left yes. or right. That's right. That yeah. is like that's what they kind of addressed. Ah, it. Right, but I've seen it happen online once or twice since that as well. Ah right, no no. So um, what I'm that, I that was another issue that that I found last. Oh, you're time. talking about a different thing. Right? Yeah, Sorry. yeah. So this is just like whenever your players out like, receiving the ball outside the box generally. Uh, around just sort Are of you, like the, you mean an attack when you're when you're attacking when, when in possession like yeah when i'm attacking okay, I'm okay. in possession i'm passing the ball to someone like about to burst into the box quite frequently it'll be like a heavy touch and like oh, you know, it always runs away from your oh, player okay, like I i'm I like oh god so but yeah that 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 was another issue from before where you press the shoot button the pass button and nothing happened you know yeah. like, i was like i had caught it like three or four times and i sort of fed back that that was one of the issues it I is had. better no it is better trust me that's it is good. it is that's better good. online anyway yeah yeah so um, but you can like, still get caught with it but it's 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 definitely better like yeah so the like i say the it's 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 very subtle minor adjustments don't expect anything like massive but these these small adjustments to the first touch and the dribbling just make it so much better 
it's not it's certainly not version one dribbling it's, it's no. not it's not go anywhere near that but like it has improved remarkably from version 2.2 the other thing i would say is um is there's sort of less magnetism to the ball with the defenders i think it was mm-hmm. a little bit too easy before they've taken that away um, yeah. but it gives you more ability to actually position yourselves because i had van dyke and this player receives the ball um he was shielding the ball it looked like he was going to go to the left so i went I went to move Van Dyke to the left, but then he turned to the right, and I was able to shift Van Dyke's body weight around the defender to the yeah. right. And I was thinking, wow! Before you just that'd be it. You'd be locked in. You'd be had that <laughs> magnetism straight into the back of the player. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah, have, yeah. have any free movement. You just run into the back of him. That's it. You're stuck. Um, so now you've got that ability to that sort of free movement, which I thought was really cool. I was thinking that's that's so much better. So I think the defending may be a little bit harder. But mm. I think that's a good thing because I think it's just too overpowered. I was like, I, you could just close your eyes and and they need yeah. to and they need to bring that back. I also noticed that the um, the matchup button isn't as effective now in mm-hmm. terms of. I had a player running down the wing. Um, he cut inside me, and I pressed the matchup button. And he did that stumble and he fell on the floor. And I've not seen that for quite a few additions. Yeah, and they've brought that that's back in. Back now, yeah. um, they've also brought the back... shoulder charge is similar. Uh, is that when you, again, well, the shoulder that... charge when you're doing the shoulder charge now or the shield when you ah. have the ball like it's slightly it doesn't really work as much like that was being abused like by yes. a lot of people yeah it's yeah. not you can do it you can do it with strong players now but like you yeah. kind of have to wait until the ball is free of the player it's a bit of a timing in it now I swear they watch but, my videos I swear they watch my videos <laughs> I had a shield to throw out and, uh, and literally I had like um, I don't know Minamino holding up like six uh, Argentinian yeah. players and run through oh, the it was score. a huge issue man it was a huge issue <laughs> yeah. yeah so I was like oh my god shielding is the way to go so I've, I've not really used shielding all that much I tend to use that online more than I do offline um, yeah but yeah that would be interesting you can just smack people out of the way with the shielding like there for yeah. a while yeah, I have to I have to check it out, but no, there's a lot, lots of it. Like like I said, with that matchup button, my player falling into the floor. I was thinking, okay, you have to be a bit more precise defensive, you know, defensively. It's going to be um, a bit more on edge, and that's that's a good thing for me in personally. So, looking forward to seeing what it's going to be like online. Um, but yeah, I just found like the defending in two point two was far too easy. I could just close my eyes and be like, okay, you try and dribble trap, you try and dribble past me without double touching. And one of the things I was going to touch on then actually is part of the the notes that we we saw. I don't know if you saw it as well, but um, about the double touch, it's actually been um, you know they've uh, I think there's like a there's a note on it saying um, unnatural movement or something. And uh, yeah, you can't kind of, double touch into a double touch basically. Oh, oh no, you can now. You can know that No, you, but I'm saying that's what they were saying. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, like, the double touch is still massively overpowered. Like, Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Sick. And, it, and the thing is, like, everyone uses it. I'm like, oh, God. Like, yeah. It's, I use it like, and, fuck, man. I use it with Neymar. Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> and, yeah exactly. Everyone's going to use it because it's just, it's just, it's an easy skill move to pull off. And, like, and you'll 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 see when players line you up because they can't do it from different angles. They can they can do different. <laughs> they either go they're running straight down or they're running straight across. I mean, a lot of players I find like just have and you can see them setting up. I'm like, oh okay, you're gonna try and double touch. Good luck with that, you know. But <laughs> but sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. Like you you no. think you've got them and then they they do that move and you go okay right I'm gonna get you now and then they do it again and you're like oh god yeah I just fell for it again <laughs> and then they curl one into the back of it like god mm. damn it <laughs> um, but yeah they just I don't know they just need to um, make I think they need to make more of the skill moves um, usable because a lot of people just yeah. don't bother with half the other stuff but they are I think there's a very specific from playing a few games like and I played a few again there today just before we were recording from playing a few games like there is there is a very specific way to get goals in the game mm-hmm. like it's it's like it's it, the game the game is kind of the, the freedom of v1.0 like i think v2.3 at the moment like it's slightly more refined than v2.2 like i think it's 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 good there are good refinements yeah um agreed. but that freedom of 1.0 where you could you know you could spread you could spread the ball out you could get the overlap you could beat a guy for pace or trickery and then be gone and have a few options. You know, you had that split second to do what you wanted on the ball. Where well, you're going to cross, you're going to cut back, or you're going to do a trick, yeah. and then, you know, curl shot or finesse shot, um, or bring it into the box and square it or whatever. I think that that's kind of that's kind of been like the way has been paved now for when you beat a defender, 
you run a bit, you turn back, then you one touch again and let the player run on again. Like yeah. it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. You'll see tonight when you're playing how people are attacking you. There's different patterns of attack that are coming. Yeah. Um, and I like, I do think it, it definitely is a more kind of more refined experience. Like especially defensively, I felt a lot more. Def- I felt like I had a lot more control with my defenders when the connection or the connection between me and my opponent was grand. Um, and like one thing I noticed as well, I don't know did you have an issue with this, but I used to always have an issue because I play five at the back. I used to always have an issue that people would spray balls in over, you know, because they weren't getting through me through the middle of the pitch. Yeah. They'd spray balls over Carlos's head. And <laughs> what would happen is Carlos would be running back to chase the ball. So his back would be, you know, like yeah. he'd be chasing the ball basically. And then you try and take a touch and the touch would be yeah. like fucking could bounce anywhere. They've yeah. kind of fixed that now. I have an actual. I'll, I'll be putting up a short later, and That's I hadn't seen the animation that Maldini or Carlos were doing before, where it's like they do like a little kind of stop, touch in the air, and it's just instant control that you can pass it. They don't need to take the extra. They don't need to take an extra touch before they pass it. It was yeah. like it was like what you were describing, where they take the extra touch and you get caught in possession. Yeah, it was that's... like that, except you're running away from the ball. Yeah, you're running towards the ball. Now you can just like I was just taking a touch with R three and passing it before as the ball kind of came down into my foot instead of stopping the ball, letting the opponent track me in and put myself under pressure. So they have definitely tweaked things. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, they haven't tweaked things that are noticeable unless you actually have played a good bit of the game. Yeah, I'm, gl- um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. About the, about yeah, the, just keep an the, eye out for it because I touch. was, you know, usually before when the ball is going in over Carlos's head, I'd either try and header it, header it back to the keeper, or else I'd auto cancel and let the ball. Do you know what I mean? I'd auto cancel the player so he wouldn't touch the ball because I was afraid of the touch he was going to make. Whereas yeah. now, you can actually play the ball in the air a little bit and have more control over. Well, I definitely felt that anyway. Yeah, that'd be, um, that's that's good because I I just remember having like a I, when I did the two point two review, there was like a minute's worth of footage where the defender, you know, I was, I was attacking. His defender wins the ball, but then because he takes a, such a bad touch to turn around to try and clear it, I tackle him. He tackles me. I tackle him. And honestly, it was like like that for like a good full minute. He just couldn't clear the ball, but I couldn't get the ball long enough to actually like create or fashion a chance. So it was just. It was just bedlam and absolute carnage um, mm. in the in in his penalty box, but I think they need to um, adjust the attacking defense strategy a little bit because I find like if you go attacking, I play a four two three one and I had, what five six players in the box six players in the yeah. box that's yeah. including my two defensive midfielders I'm like why, why are they in there but I find like if I go attacking with a four two three one, I find it really overpowering. I feel yeah. like I like the, there's nothing they can do. I can just completely stifle them. They can't get out there in half. I'm just like, like, you know, I'm just like, oh, what, what, what does this yeah. do? But it, it doesn't just affect my team. It, it affects the opponent's team. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So when they go attacking, then it yeah. evens it back up again, and then yeah. you sort of get that balance. To fight just, fire with fire, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'm just like the, these these things shouldn't have such a big, big impact. I think when both teams are neutral, the gameplay is much better. Yeah. But as soon as you, as soon as you go start putting on attacking or find all defensive, then it, it just alternates the the way the game's played. Obviously, if they're if they go attacking, I tend to go one blue defensively, and then I'm I'm settled for a counter attacking, but don't create as many chances if I'm attacking. Yeah. So yeah, I just think like whilst it's a good feature, I just think they need to adjust it. Like why why are defensive midfielders in the penalty box? Like they they mm. shouldn't be that high even with an attacking strategy. <laughs> But yeah. it, it just made it really hard for him. So that, with that, like you say, with that change to the defence, hopefully that's going to be able to make them alleviate the, that press. Because obviously that press with all, all six players in their penalty box, they mm. should be able to pass around that if they've got the ability to actually take a, take a half-decent touch as a professional footballer. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that would be, be interesting to sort of see how that impacts the, the attacking strategy. Yeah. No, because the, the game definitely does... The game definitely does let you make mistakes now. It's just, it's very hard to score from that mistake compared to what it was before in V1.0. That's, That's probably my biggest takeaway from it is that like, the game kind of says to you, you have a, ma- like I have a massive overlap there on my left wing with Dembele and I have acres of room to roam into. But 
by the time I get into a position where I'm able to put in a cross or cut in and have a, have a shot on goal, the space is kind of closed down. Even though, you know, when I had the space there, when I passed the ball, it's just, it closes down. So it's like the game lets you play, but then it kind of like, like it forces you to, to, to kind of replay it then again, like a couple of seconds later. Yeah. Um, that's kind of my biggest takeaway. Like I've only played maybe 10 matches online. Like I've played a couple of the challenge events and divisions or eFootball league. And that's kind of my biggest takeaway from it is that like the goals I'm kind of scoring are more like they're very hard fought goals where, you know, like there is a relief when the ball kind of goes in <laughs> compared to like, you know, some games where I felt I was like, right, I'm, I'm two one up against this guy. But, you know, I'm like, I just, I have him. I like, I know what he's going to do. I'm, I'm going to score again. And then yeah. the third goal will always come. That, that to me now, it seems to be kind of like reduced. And then it's like, you know, you have to concentrate a little bit more on, maybe I've just come up against really good opponents since I've went back playing it because mm. everyone's back playing it. But um, yeah, like, you know, like I, I was playing a guy yesterday. He went, I think he went 2 0 up and he went full blue. Like he was fully blue and he had like man marking on every time I was running up against him, he had man mark he he had his two DMFs man marking Romario. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he had basically a back six <laughs> and I could not go through the middle. Now I came back and beat him four two, I think. Yeah. But like it was just it was just one of those games where it was like I could see what the game was telling me basically to do. And the minute I started doing it, I sc- I started scoring goals. Do you know the the, the patterns yeah. that were that were giving me space, he wasn't closing down. So it's like, if I had stayed playing the way I was playing for him when he scored 2-0, he would have beat me, like, but I had to change. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah man, it's it's an interesting one because, like, I do think, I do think this is probably what we're going to have now for the next couple of weeks because, obviously, there's no live update until, I think it's the 11th of January. Mm-hmm. So everything's going to be kind of closing down in terms of, obviously, you know, with the holidays and stuff. Um like it's going to be very interesting to me how this V two point three holds up over the next potentially over the next month. Like I don't see a gameplay update coming like this. I don't see V two point four coming before February, really. You know, realistically. Yeah. Um, if they're doing the live update back on the eleventh, and then what? Maybe eleven another week. Maybe the last week in January. Maybe. Um, but that's going to be interesting to me as to how this holds up because. It's it's very hard for me to put my finger on it. So I'm interested to see your live stream later. And I've been watching, you know, I watched Sep live stream last night. I've watched a couple of the lads, you know, do videos. And I know Med was doing stuff. And Hussein and a few of the other boys. But, like, it's very hard for me to kind of see what I like and don't like about it. Yeah. It just feels like I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Do yeah. You know, that kind of yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think we should have another, another podcast like. towards the end of January and we can <laughs> yeah. put our thoughts on what we think the gameplay is actually like. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it, but now you've what you said, I'm like, mm, a bit apprehensive. Maybe maybe just game against good players or all the skill gaps just being closed again. Who knows? You know, yeah. it, it, it does, does seem a bit done down considering what we used to have, even in PES 21, um, in terms of like the some of the passes you could pull off in that in that game I find like <clears throat> for example like the Poborski lob you could use that as a you know just a lofted pass mm. so you could just scoop it over someone's head I used to use that like quite a lot but that's sort of gone from uh, from eFootball you can obviously do the 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 Poborski lob over the goalkeeper from a shot point of view but you can't do it from a from you know outfielders just passing the ball around which is uh, a little bit sad but um, yeah just you, you you just don't know what sort of height you're going to get on your lob passes anymore. I've, that's yeah. That's the impression no, I, I get. Sometimes you dink it over the midfielders and you're like, that's good. And then you'll do another one and it'll just be like so low, just like floated so <laughs> lowly. And it's not because they've got like low lofted passing or anything. It's just, just the game decides that's the pass they're going to make. So yeah. Yeah. But I'm, no, I'm looking forward to trying out 2.3 in, the, in, in anger tonight and see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's good, man. It is like I, I've, as I said, I've had a very mixed bag with it, so I don't want to put you off it or put you on anything. Do you know, just to oh, highlight no, a few no, things if, that if I, I noticed. Lose, if I lose down, um, it, it, I'm just like, well, Barry said he lost a few games. Yeah, there, so exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> he had a rough time. So, 
Yeah. But it is, it is like, it, it's definitely, it, I think eFootball Man as a whole, like, it is an acquired taste, like, definitely. It's not, it's not something that you can just pop in and play and, you know, like, go on and kind of, I don't know, very casually play it. Like, there is, there is a bit of learning in it. Like, mm-hmm. I come up against teams the whole time and I'm like, why, why are you playing this player in this position? Yeah, he's he's 98 overall, but like, mm-hmm. you know, like he's got 84 stamina and you're playing him the whole match and he's absolutely wrecked. And it's like, there is a bit of team tactics in it from yeah. like just getting your team right and stuff that a lot of people, like I'd usually bring on collar in the 70th minute. And you can just see a good player. Even if it's a good player, he starts to panic because he knows what's coming. Yeah, and yeah. all I do is I bluff. All I do is instead of playing crosses, I'll put one or two you know, spammy crosses into Collar and then I'll just start playing with the 10 other players. Yeah. That, like, Collar is a pure distraction because he thinks, right, all this guy is going to do now is route one headers and then I'll start doing my one touch and my little dribbles and cutbacks yeah. and stuff because he's all focused on Collar. Yes. So, yeah. I think with V2.3, you will probably notice, I think you'll notice when you go online tonight, there is a little bit more aggressiveness with the closing down, the pressing. Um, it's not... It's not Pez my club levels of pressure now, but it is. It can get very hard sometimes if you mm. come up against a good player. Yeah. Because I think what they've did is they've, they've allow they allow you to play a certain way, but it's very hard to actually break through playing that certain way. If you get me. Yes. Like it's yeah. it's it's very hard if you score a goal on the wing and rip somebody on the wing and curl a shot into the top corner with Neymar or whatever, like and you try to do it again, you'll be allowed to do it, but you mightn't score out of it, kind of. Yeah, you know it's it's kind of like the game kind of like shifts the AI to say, right, this guy is struggling to stop Spoony down this side, so you know the AI kind of kicks in a little bit. Gotcha. That's just how I feel about it. Is that like the game definitely? Lens. It feels a lot more balanced. Like mm. is what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying this in a bad way. I think the game is a lot more balanced. It's just it depends on what side of the coin you are, whether you're winning or losing. Yeah, you know it. It just feels. It's that just, it's just tr- for me. It's just trying to get that attack and defense one-on-one dual balance right. Because oh, two point yeah. two, the defenders were far too strong. It's too easy yeah. to stop dribblers. So you, in the end, you just resort into passing. It's boring. I think we both agree. We had a like a chat, and we're just like, it's boring right now because it's just pass, pass, pass. Yeah, and and shoot for the win. You know, is that you can't really, you haven't got any other options. Yeah, you can do like a a double touch here and there, and might get through, but. Dribbling wise, it it was it was non-existent. I find just all my all my goals were pretty much passing people to death, um, and one one twos more or less. Um, maybe they'll cross into the box, but generally, it would just be passing people to death rather than dribbling. So hopefully they get that if they get that right again, which I thought that I thought it was right in version one. I thought the defending I just felt really on edge with the defending. You had to be spot yeah. on to stop your opponent. Um, I think if they can get back to that. Obviously, I think perhaps the drumming was a little bit too OP in version one, if I'm being brutally honest, because I just... No, don't say that, man. Don't say that. Come on. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it. It, it was great just to yeah, absolutely melt broken. people, but you could li- literally get one player and you could, like, just skill around the whole whole freaking team if, you, if, you, if you're if you up against, like, a, a casual player um, or, you know, or someone who's new to the game. Um, but I find now it's um, you know, certainly 2.2 was was just too easy to defend. Anyone could sort of pick it up and play and maybe just grind out and a no no draw. Yeah. Just through uh just through sheer the way the game's built up and defending's relatively easy. Um so it'd be interesting to sort of see tonight just to see if that balance has shifted a little bit, whether it's favours yeah, the man. attackers, favours defenders. I think judging by what I played, you know, I played like I said, I played one game. Um I d I don't think there's too big a shift to Make it me make me worry about the defending aspect. No, 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 yeah. it's not. It's not. I mean, it's more. I think the things that you'll probably notice are more things you'll just notice organically. And like, mm-hmm. oh, right, I can you know do that now, or oh, yeah. I can do this, or like it. There's nothing. Uh, the, the, the shielding and the shoulder charge or the matchup. That's probably the biggest noticeable thing, like for me that I noticed. But then I don't really use the shielding compared to other people that often. Yeah. Um, so, like, I haven't really had to adjust to that because I know some people used to abuse the hell out of it. I use it a lot. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I so, it. like, I, I use it. I did use it against the AI, and it seemed to be pretty good. But, like, you can even use it in spells. I, I find with the shielding, just one 
on, yeah. on hard tap here or there, and then and then lay it off as as quickly as you can. You can't you, yeah. you can't you can't abuse it. So it's a good mechanic. I just think they need to they need to kind of like you know they need to kind of like tweak it a little bit more before it, they come back. Yeah, like with it in the next update because yeah. it is a good idea, but. You know, you shouldn't be able to hand off people like you're playing rugby either. I know, I know. Like, you know, it's, it honestly, is a bit stupid, like. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I had really go chasing. I think it was Minamino, and he just pushed him back like he was <laughs> like he was like some sort of Jedi or something. Just he's like, been working out, man. <laughs> he, he must he's have, like Bruce yeah. Lee with the one one inch punch. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Yeah, man. Look, we'll leave it there. That was a good discussion. A bit longer than we probably planned, but. I have to go and get my hair cut, get my Christmas cut yes. now. Yes, yeah, no worries. So, um, looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, if yeah, if you guys obviously you're going to be checking out Spoonie tonight, check out the live stream. What time are you streaming at? Seven uh, thirty uh, tonight. Oh well, it depends. Sorry. I'll probably try and put this podcast. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah, if yeah, if you have, if we put the podcast up before tonight, <laughs> yes. which is the twenty third of December, I, I I won't make any promises now, but I'll try and yeah, get it yeah, up. Yeah. Um, Go back and watch his. Go back and watch Spoonie's live stream for tonight uh, at time of recording. But uh, yeah, we'll probably see some rage, Spoonie. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I just want to see oh my God. popcorn out with the rage. <laughs> but um, other than that, lads, yeah, it's been another episode of the podcast. We will be back. I don't know will we get another episode up over the Christmas period. I will see what the plan is with Wes. Um, this was one obviously we recorded two weeks ago didn't come out obviously if you missed that at the start that this is the 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 other one so hopefully this version comes out good and there's no audio issues mm-hmm. um but yeah spoonie thanks for taking the time man i appreciate it, it was a, good, a great chat on v2.3 and the wider kind of stuff going on and uh good luck tonight with your yeah with your stream th- man thank you very much and uh merry christmas to you and yeah, uh, your family and uh hope you have a Good Same to you, well. man, and, and to everyone um, listening as well. Yeah, I hope you exactly. Enjoy the holidays and uh, have some good experiences with eFootball, man. That's that's what it's all about. Yeah, it is. Christmas it is. Day. No yeah. broken controllers now on Christmas Day, all right, when Santi's gone. Because <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it before Christmas. Yeah. That's the way I would look at it. So you have uh, you have a chance to get something in your stocking. But yeah, man, it's going to be an interesting it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. So hopefully we'll be revisiting this quite soon. We'll get on for another chat, Spoonie. And uh, we're still. We're still do our we're still do do our uh, match up, you know. Yes, yeah, we have to do that. We're still yeah, do our to, match up. Yeah, you have to have to. We'll have, have to arrange it. Have the to grudge f- match. Can't wait to face Maldini. I never face. I don't know, face him yet, so. <laughs> Looking forward you'll to that. You'll be facing. You'll be facing uh, collar. That's who you'll be facing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my collar right as well, and <laughs> I'll bring my land of giants. I'll bring my land giants. You can deal with V calls and collar and <laughs> God, these also, also found out their dust. <laughs> yeah, two red cards. <laughs> All right, let's. We'll end it there. I will be back when we're back with the ne- next episode, and uh, you can catch us me and Spoonie both over on YouTube and you can listen to this podcast anywhere you want on YouTube or any audio uh, podcast available selection as well I don't know if that makes sense but yeah anywhere that you can get your podcasts or listen to your podcasts you can listen to them here so that is it for me Spoonie thanks again man Have no, a good thank Christmas. you mate yeah Merry uh, Christmas to you talk to you later yeah cheers everyone